Welcome back to Dark Souls, my name's Gordon. Let's get going. In the previous episode we got stuck at the door where the Crest of Artorias is in Dark Root Basin, Dark Root Garden. So I've had to go a long way around and we're back here in the parish. And let's deal with this black phantom boulder knight. And um, just to reiterate, this series focuses on Gravelord phantoms and increases the challenge because this is new game and not new game plus so I've said in previous episodes you need to be able to parry and if your parry timing is off which it was in this case because I'm trying to get used to the grass crest shield instead of like a target shield to parry and so yeah I was my timings were off but anyway um, there was things I didn't mention in the previous episode about the parish that intrigued me. I um, just want to get into, you know, speculations for a second. Um, in real life, temples, and I mean Miyazaki, we know that Miyazaki gets and his co-creators get influence from the real world. I believe for Bloodborne, he travelled to um, Czech Republic and the surrounding uh, countries in order to get inspiration, like Hungary and so forth, in order to get inspiration for like medieval Europe and the kind of gothic architecture and so on and so forth. But anyway, let me talk about this because I only got a limited time to talk about things and I've got some things in my mind. So this area we're in just now, the parish, in real life, temples and holy places, parishes, um, they're like a microcosm of um, the heavens and of earth and uh, they I suppose they represent man as well in fact they might even have a stronger representation of man than the other way around than what I'd mentioned a second ago um, like for example the King Solomon's temple the Temple of Solomon um, real life temple um, they derived uh, the masons, the stone masons and architects that created it derived their inspiration from and the descriptions, biblical descriptions of the tabernacle and um, so like they see how it's split into, we've got the area coming in the door away in the distance there we've then got this area where there's like four boulder knights and this area we're in just now and then further in behind us we've got stairs and that's important, the stairs leading to a holy sacrament or um, an altar, if you want to call it. Usually the altar has a holy sacrament on top of it. But what each of these areas represent is... So the stairs lead into the holy sacrament, which also represents the deity, or the god. The stairs are like, you know, some people claim that's representative of a... a neck leading to the head. Um, and you'll have heard of the term Jacob's Ladder before, and some people speculate that that refers to a spinal cord. But anyway, um, yeah, so like different parts of the temple or parish represent different parts of the the universe or the or man. So the the lower part represents the physical world, the material world, and that's the part where most of the congregation sit in the chairs and whatnot. And then further on, you've got the spiritual world and then the deity and so on and so forth. It's just very interesting and I think you see that represented in uh, in this maybe, in this parish. Anyway, uh, in terms of just Dark Souls lore, why are the Balder Knights here? I've been looking into the Balder Knights in the last couple of days and apparently um, they are associated with... Um, well, first of all, let's talk about Lothric. So we freed Lothrek, obviously, Not enough. <laughs> and um, this is him giving us what he considers a reward for freeing him from the, the prison, which was, he was maybe imprisoned by the Channelers and the Balder Knight. Most the Balder Knights are in the parish. Now. Um, now normally I would not take on Lothrek here, I prefer to take him on with the Black Eye Orb in Anne Orlando and take on his two uh, cohorts. Um, but. Um, because we're playing against Gravelord Phantoms, I want to kick him off the edge. <laughs> and that is not kicking him off the edge. I couldn't believe that happened. Um, because I want the Ring of Favour and Protection, which gives us a 20% bonus for health, stamina and equip burden. 
And uh, you notice he aggroed straight away. Apparently, according to ENB, I got this information from one of ENB's videos, um, he claims that Miyazaki has stated that the, the quicker an enemy aggroes on being hit, the eviler you can just how, you know, how male malevolent these uh, characters are. So somebody like um, Dusk of Lucio might take a, f you know, a few hits to aggro. Uh, whereas we know Lotric aggro's like in one hit. Um, and I believe um, Crestfallen also aggro's quite quickly. So he might be a bro in helping you and, you know, guiding you in certain directions and towards your goals and whatnot by ringing the bells of awakening. But maybe deep down he's got more uh, malevolent agendas and intentions. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fight the Capra Demon to get that out of the way. Because uh, I want the key to the depths. And uh, with the Capra Demon, it's susceptible to uh, Gold Pine Resin, Lightning Buff, and also uh, Black Knight weapons. And you might have already picked a Black Knight weapon up anyway, you know, uh, before you even reach this stage of the game. So, choice is yours. But um, the advice that everyone always gives when somebody's encountering the Capra Demon for the first time is kill the dogs, kill those push pushes very quickly. Because uh, they're more just an annoyance, to be honest with you, and they stagger you. That's thing. That's the biggest danger. Um, so here we go. And see, that's the problem with the halberd. It just takes a wee bit too long sometimes to get that thrust attack out. You can see I'm being staggered by the doggy woggies here, and uh, they're pains in the arses, to be honest with you. Um, and I just like killing them because they're a pain. And plus they're demonic dogs anyway, they're not, you know, dogs that you'd play catch with and stuff, frisbee. Anyway, we've got the gold pine resin, that's going to do a huge amount of damage to this bastard. And um yes, well, 250 I suppose that's alright. But the plunging attack, if you're having trouble with this guy, plunging attacks are fantastic against him. Make sure he's right under you instead of what I did a moment ago, which was, you know, miss. But yeah, you can see that 650 or something damage took out like, you know, three quarters of yourself or something. Um, but yeah, so I was mentioning the Balderites. So I read the other day that the Balderites, are, their skin is black because they've apparently been corrupted by moonlight magic. And I'd not heard that term before in Dark Souls. Um, but apparently it's um, contained in an item description. While my buff was still on, I thought I would take on these Black Knight uh, thieves. Um, so yeah, so the other association with Moonlight Magic is the tentacle-footed scion of uh, the Gwyn family, i.e. Gwendolyn. <clears throat> uh, what's it? Dark? Dark Moonlight? Gwendolyn? No, that doesn't sound right. Um, and uh, he was apparently born under a full moon and in um, occult belief system, in various occult belief systems and paganistic belief systems. Uh, the moon is feminine. The moon represents feminine energy. That was a good um, evasion there. Very quick. Um, be careful with this guy. He can inflict massive amounts of damage if he does that uh, charging attack with the the torch. Uh, because he's a Gravelord Phantom as well, you know. Um, so yeah, in occultism, uh, the moon represents feminine energy. You know, the, the moon's waxing and waning throughout the month. You know, we go from the full moon, the new moon, etc, etc. And uh, whereas the sun represents constance, you know, there's a, um, a constancy about the, the moon, you know. Uh, and it's, it's bright and it's, you know, it's creative, uh, you know, it's nourishing. Um, but I suppose that could be associated with femininity as well. But anyway, let's not get drowned down, drowned in uh, too many um, diversions. Um, so yeah, the, the point is anyway that we know that Gwendolyn has this feminine side. And uh, yeah, the Balderites apparently were corrupted by moonlight magic. So I don't know if there's a connection there. Um, but if that's the case, why aren't they present, um, you know, near where we actually find Gwendolyn and Anna Orlando. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this, we've got the butchers down here, 
And sometimes Dark Souls is um, it's, it's most funnest. Is that a word? Funnest? You can get the most amount of fun from Dark Souls when things go wrong. And that's what's about to happen here. For some reason things just go awry and I lose control of the situation. And um, yeah, it just it plays out in quite a entertaining way. And that's the, the that's one of the beauties of Dark Souls. You know, each time you come through an area, you might know it obviously you've been through here numerous times, but it can just it can just unfold in a way that's unpredictable, a way that you didn't envisage and um, catch you unawares. And uh, this butcher is guarding that was a really quick parry, I don't really know, I didn't manage, and then this is when it starts to go all fucked up. Um, yeah, the butcher, uh, who are they preparing meat for? Is it just for the hollows? Is it for somebody else? Is it for the big uh, bosses in this area? Um, this was a ill-advised move, because instead of actually plunging attacking him, um, yeah, and then there's another one, another torch hollow, uh, black phantom torch hollow. The dogs are fucking my shit up, and the butcher's still up there waiting to smash me with his uh, butcher's knife, or cleave me in two. And uh, these butchers are female, by the way. Uh, everyone knows that, I think, now. Um, but yeah, the, but the, who they prepared meat for, um, who knows. Don't know much about the lore about these guys, uh, these women. Um, and why are they hiding as well? You'll see in a minute, there's one hiding. Um, we know that they like to stew their victim in uh, barrels of something. We don't know what the... There's another one, you can see the Gravelord Phantom butcher that's down there. Um, we don't know what they're brewing them in, but it's probably something nasty anyway. And uh, we'll go and rescue Lawtrek in a moment. So I enjoyed that wee sequence. Oh, we're still not dealt with the butcher. And you... She's aggressive, that butcher you know, she just comes at you with the, what is it, is it something to hit meat with, like you know, tenderised meat or something, and then she's got the butcher's knife, the butcher's knife by the way gives you, we got a humanity there, that was good, butcher's knife gives you 5 HP in every hit, so some people like to use it, it doesn't scale well apparently, um, some people recommend, maybe this is Dark Souls 2, maybe I'm misremembering this, but some people uh, say, recommend, um, Infusing it with a raw stone. Can you do that in Dark Souls? I, don't, I can't even remember to be honest. But uh, you notice when we picked the large ember up there, uh, when we opened the, you know, the box it was in, um, there was like a light emanating from it. I don't know if that's got any significance, but I don't think that happens with any of the other treasure chests that you think. Um, so we rescue Laurentius, and that allows us to upgrade pyromancy stuff. What else? I've written some other things down here. I don't know if I'll get the time to to include them all in. Um, yeah, this is the one where the the butcher's hiding up here, and it's if you can parry, you know that's a worthwhile skill when you come into the depths. That wasn't very clever. I mean, it, you know, it's funny how Miyazaki explicitly states that they're female characters, but they've got such masculine. They're always, I, I assume that their voice acting was done by male actors. Um, it's just incongruous when you when you take into account the fact that you know they are females, but they sound so masculine, and they've got grunts and so on. That's the sound of constipation I've ever heard it. I don't know what that thing is in its right hand, or its left hand or right. It's like an upside down, it's like a somebody holding a baseball bat at the fat end. Um, yeah, the depths, I, I like the depths. There's some enemies in here that I really am not fond of. The slimes that we're about to encounter in a moment, oh, they're a pain in the arse. I recommend, if you're coming here, um, to go to the undead female merchant, who you'll pass anyway as you come towards Capra Demon, assuming you're coming from Firelink Shrine direction. Uh, the undead female merchant sells fire arrows, and uh, yeah, they can be useful in dealing with these stupid slimes. And there's one above us right now, and you've got to be quick evading them. Uh, 
they should take, I, I don't know, I think they should just die in like a couple of hits rather than like the number of hits it takes to actually kill them. But I believe they're susceptible to fire damage. Um, what would have been good actually before I came here maybe would have been to go back to the asylum to pick up the rusted iron ring just so we can move through the the water more quickly when we need to. I'm hesitant to call it water. Another that was another humanity I didn't even notice at the time. And this is when you do the, uh, the you know the run towards the the door the door which is uh, concealing the the bonfire. Um, and always inevitably I always get caught by one of these slain buggers. And I'm out of Estes here, so it's you know the bonfire is a welcome sight. Anyway, that's basically it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll just continue on through the depths and we'll have fun.